Hi guys, good evening. I think uh, you know we should kick start now. It's all the more five minutes above above the standard time. All right. Uh, welcome guys. Welcome. Uh, welcome to the strategic business leader orientation for the upcoming exam. Um, I really want to take some time of yours, uh, in, you know, in this session to really discuss on uh, the areas that examiner is really looking at from the SBL standpoint. The way I have structured this orientation is that we will be talking in details as to what the overall SBL curriculum is all about. And then I want to talk about one very important thing that is really coming your way. And that is specifically for the folks who are planning to give the strategic business leader exam after June 2023. There is a change that is coming up after June 2023 in the SPL exam. And that is that they would be giving you, uh, they are changing the structure of the exam while the syllabus and everything remains to be the same, but the exam structure is changing. So effectively now, now that the exam is of four hours, exam from the September 2023 onwards would be for three hours. So they are taking off, taking off this one hour from the September 23 standpoint. Anyways, we will talk more on that as we go forward. And of course, there will be various sessions that we'll be doing for the September 2023 batch. But right now, I'm more talking for the June 2023 folks. This orientation is specifically for the June 23 exam. From the September, there would be a change. And of course, orientation would be changed accordingly. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. Moving in, guys, I just want to show, you know, you can let me know if you can, if you're able to see my slide. Right, no problem. Let me know when you are able yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Thanks. Right. You can see that. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Uh, moving on, guys. You know, I just wanted to start off with some ground rules that I have for this session. I just want you know at least your forty to forty-five minutes of time to really be with me. So I do not want your mobile phones to be troubling you. Like, you know, I have kept my mobile phone on the silent mode. I would appreciate if you can also put your, at least for coming 45 minutes, that to be on a silent mode. I want all the cameras to be on, you know, guys, this is something that you really need to learn with me, um, you know, for all of my sessions as we go forward. I do not like talking to black windows. I do not like talking as if I am on a video call and you are on audio call. It doesn't happen that way. It has to be a face-to-face -face chat. I would appreciate all of you to be, to be opening up your videos. It has to be a face-to-face, eye-to-eye, heart-to-heart conversation that we would have from, from you know, for strategic business leader exam. I just do not want to talk as if I'm talking and I'm recording. I am anyway used to recording any which ways. These sessions are primarily to talk more heart-to-heart, face-to-face, eye-to-eye. And I would really appreciate if you guys can please switch on your cameras. Switching off cameras is not in, uh, allowed in my sessions. Open up and talk. I think that's the premise that I have. At times, you know, it, it, we really, you know, need it. I really want all of you to really talk through in terms of, you know, uh, what all things that really comes to your mind. Uh, there are various things that, that you know, especially for the folks who, uh, you know, who somewhat somewhere have given this exam in the past and have not been able to clear it. I think it is imperative for us to really open up and talk in terms of, you know, where you think you're struggling with and if there is any help that I can really do to make you clear the exam in the best possible way. Guys, I, you know, the reason we have an excellent result, you know, of the strategic business leader exam quarter on quarter is because we try to uh, ensure that we are able to kill the right pain area of any and every student and that is only possible if you'll open up and talk to me in terms of you know areas that you think you have a struggle on and at least I can guide you that you know this is the way you can really live with it or you know move forward with it and of course kill it in the best possible way is that clear yes sir now coming you know coming to the last point which is I think is is the is the is the most important one which is like make the best out of the session any session and every session that you have should have a takeaway for you you should be able to take something out of that session because you're spending your 45 minutes with me and your time is really precious. Forget about mine. Your time is really precious and you really have to take the best out of it. And that is only possible if you are really be if you know if you're really with me for 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 you know that amount of time and talking to me and of course getting some some solution, some answer and some resolution of anything that you're really struggling with. Is that really clear, guys? Yes, sir. Just wanted to do a sense check, guys, before I really move on further. I don't want like, you know, me talking and, of course, you're not hearing. 
I hope my voice and myself is pretty clear. You can see me. You can, of course, hear me rightfully. You know, the thumbs up would be really, really helpful for me. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. So what we will be covering in this, in this uh, uh, session, I, I really want to point out some of the questions that you may have. And this is basis, you know, understanding that I've had with various students in my, uh, you know, in my conversation, my interactions, they do have these questions. Uh, you know, questions. So we'll talk on that in a while. Um, second important thing is, is understanding the strategic business leader exam structure and the content in terms of, you know, what the content of the exam is and what is going to be the structure of your exam. We'll talk on that. We'll also talk on the ASVIL exam marking scheme. This is very important for anyone to really understand and appreciate. And of course, you know, this would help you take, take your journey forward in terms of how you should be preparing for your exam. We will also be deep diving, my friend, onto the various SBL syllabus areas that are there. So you have, uh, uh, there is a good amount of content that is there in the syllabus area. So we'll deep dive into, into it in terms of, you know, what exactly is expected from you. We'll talk on that in a brief. And of course, we'll deep dive as we go forward in the sessions. I do want to, you know, talk on the study plan and your approach to the preparation of the of the SBL exam. We'll talk on in, you know, towards the end in terms of, you know, what should be your approach in terms of sessions that you've got and how one should be really taking this forward in the best possible way. And then towards the end, we will have a Q&A. We'll, we'll, let's talk on that. Uh, uh, let's discuss it and, you know, get into the, you know, more, I would say, detailing of, you know, the issues, the concerns that you may have, and then we can take it on, you know, from there. Does that sound like a plan, guys? I hope it is indeed. So we will move on in terms of, you know, what the first slide is. So some of the questions that you may have, and this is something that I'm anticipating, and you can, of course, add on if there is anything that really comes your way, or you can, you know, put that onto the chat box if there is anything that you think in addition to this is coming onto your mind, and I'll pick that up too. First question that you may have is, how will I go forward with the lectures that FinTram has provided? What should be the plan? Is that enough? Is that not enough? Do I really need to do anything more? Do I need to refer any other book? Do you know the, Does the material in the lectures enough? Does the content that is being given is updated? Anything that I really need to refer? Any other book? Any other material? Do I need to practice more questions that are being given by FinTram or you know what is what is being given is enough? If any doubt, then where should I go? Where should I, who should I talk to? How should I reach out to sir? And so on and so forth. Is there a mock exam that would be there? Uh, you know, in the SBL, if yes, then when should I give my mock? How many mocks would be there? Will you get a revert on the review on the mock or the, you know, on your performance of the exam? And of course, get to understand that you know where things are going wrong and so on and so forth. Now, these are like some very common and the <clears throat> recurring questions that I have seen from various students that they really have onto their mind. And I think the, you may also have that, you know, somewhat somewhere with you. So I just thought to pen down and we would be, you know, getting answer of each and everything that is written over here as we go forward. And guess what? If there is anything more that comes your way, I'll be happy to really interact and chat on, of course, you know, resolve that too. Is that clear, guys? Thumbs up, guys. I really need the thumbs up. I really like your thumb. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on, guys. You know, I do want to talk on the, fir the first thing first is the SBL exam structure. The SBL exam for the June 2023, as if as of now, is four-hour exam, uh, wherein you would get 240 minutes, which is four hours, to read, plan, and write the exam. From the 240 minutes, what I would expect you, and of course, was, was the, what the examiner expects you to do is that your 45 to 60 minutes, max 60 minutes, should be spent on reading and preparing for the question. So effectively, you would get, you know, after 60 minutes, you would get 180 minutes. So let's say three hours to write the exam. One hour to read and prepare and three hours to write the exam. And this is what we have done. This is what we would be preparing you for as we go forward in our sessions. We will be getting on to the roots of it and we will be getting on in terms of, you know, how you should be planning for it. There are various things that we have done in the sessions. And of course, there is things we would do in the sessions. There are, there are various questions that we have solved in the revision bootcamp or we would be solving together to really ensure that you are able to grasp the time management in the best possible way. Because in the ASBEL exam, time management is going to be the key, my friend. Is that clear? 
Now, this is the exam structure. You would get a complete integrated case study, which is like, you know, a situation would be given to you in the, in the exam. That situation would be, a, you know, kind of a case wherein you are dealing with various situations. Now, that situation can be that you are given a situation wherein you are analyzing a project. You are given a situation wherein you are thinking about the risk of an organization. You are contemplating an investment that you really need to make. You are contemplating or dealing with an HR issue. You are also dealing with a acquisition that really comes your way. You are also dealing with, let's say, any kind of selling of subsidiary that you are making, and so on and so forth. Any technological change that organization is really going through that they are really expecting to really incorporate and so on and so forth. So there are various things that would be given to you in this case study, which is generally 10 to 12, 15 pages or at times 18 pages long. And that is what you really need to learn in terms of how should you be reading that when you would hit your exam in the best possible way. And that's what we'll be practicing on in our revision bootcamp also in terms of you know what is the best strategy or way out in terms of going through the content. You would generally have eight to 12 questions to be answered in the exam. Now that can be, you know, in the parts or that can be in totality. Generally, you have like four questions having two parts each or five questions having two parts each to be answered in the exam. And that's what you really need to take down. And of course, all of the questions that are there in the exam are mandatory. There is no choice that is there in the SBL exam. So you would not be able to skip any question. You have to answer anything and everything there and then. If you really <clears throat> circle back in terms of the content that would be given to you in the exam, you would find that this exam would give you and of course ask you to at the same time that you need to understand how you read board minutes, spreadsheets, annual reports, survey, risk reports and so on and so forth. So they expect you to learn in terms of how one should be reading it and at the same time they also expect you to write that. So they may give you a scenario wherein you have to write an email, you have to write a report, you have to write a press release, you have to uh, write a report, you have to write a memo, you have to write a survey. So on one side, he may give you some, on other side, he may ask you some. So we have to learn in terms of, you know, what kind of formats are there in these questions that examiner is asking. So we will be telling you that if the report will come, then my friend, you have to refer this format. So Urvashi might, you know, see a social, you know, question in the exam wherein she has to prepare a report. So we would be telling Urvashi that, you know what, Urvashi, report has this kind of a format. Barring the content that you would be putting into it, format is this and you really need to follow this. If, you know, somewhat Rahul will, you know, will, will get a situation in the exam wherein he will need to, you know, let's say plan an email. Then he need to learn as to how to write an email. While, you know, while working in various organizations, we are used to writing emails because that is the only thing we do. We only write emails in the organization. But when it comes to the exam, there is a particular format that is to be followed for writing an email as to, you know, to, from, um, subject, uh, the way you would start an email, the way the, 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 the content of email will go and the way you would end an email. So we would be learning that and so on and so forth. So depending upon the kind of situation that you would see in the exam, we would be talking through in terms of all of those things that really, you know, may get your way even when you're dealing with these kind of situations in the exam. And we have practiced a lot, my friend, on this. And we would be doing that together in terms of taking and, of course, excelling in that in the best possible way. Now, last but very important thing from the SBL exam standpoint is that the exam expects you to get into the role, get into the role of a situation or or a uh, position that is given to you in the exam. So exam would want you to behave like a CEO, CFO, head of a function, audit manager, consultant, uh, external auditor, internal auditor, uh, a, a supportee or a manager to your CEO, manager to a CFO and so on and so forth. So they would be giving you different roles, different hats to be weird in the exam. And of course, answering that question, wearing that hat. So effectively, you have to step in into the shoes of that particular person who is really having that kind of a situation at their hand. And then you would be answering that at that point in time. So you have to think like that person, step into that shoes, 
step into their shoes, step into their situation, and then answer that in the best possible way. Don't worry, my friend, while I'm, you know, I'm just trying to cite out the, the content and the areas, we would be taking you through all of these things in detail and capturing that in the best possible way. There is a lot that we have done in the practice of the questions, wherein all of these areas are specifically highlighted and specifically dealt with. So don't worry on that. Um, you know, there is a lot that is coming your way any which ways. Is that clear, guys? Any anything that that troubles you, Anant? You know, any thumbs up, guys? You know, if you are really feeling sad, then give me a thumbs up. Uh, I, I'll be I'll be more than happy to see that I'm making you sad. <laughs> so Asma is giving me two thumbs. <laughs> are, you, are you taking questions? Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. Are you taking questions right now? No, I'm not taking any questions. Oh, okay. But in, in case you have any, you can you know put that on the and the on the chat. I'll be happy to take it towards the. Thanks, sir. All right. Coming on to the marking scheme of the SBL exam, my friend. SBL exam is an only exam which has twenty percent of the marking percentile in the form of professional skills. So effectively, he would the questions that he would give you in the exam would be only of 80 marks. <clears throat> 20 marks would be given to you in terms of how you'd be writing those 80 marks. So effectively, let's say, just give you an example. Let's say he'll give you a situation wherein he'll ask you to prepare a report. Okay, good, I'm preparing a report. But how are you preparing a report? What are you really writing in it? Would also give you 20 additional marks. So 80% marks... <clears throat> are for what you write and 20% marks are for how you write. And that is where you need to demonstrate the professional skills that are there in the SBL exam. And we have excelled that in detail in terms of, you know, what do you really need to know and answer that from the examiner standpoint. We will be going through all of those professional skills in detail in our sessions. And of course, try to master it so as to ensure that you know that, you know, in these questions, what you should be writing and how you should be writing and moving forward. All right, moving on, guys, <clears throat> ISBL exam marking scheme. We already discussed that 80 marks, 80% 80 marks for what and 20% marks for how. 20% marks are for demonstration of the, you know, professional skills that are there. And I call these professional skills as the C case, wherein you have to demonstrate the communication skills. You have to demonstrate the commercial acumen skill. You have to demonstrate analysis skill, skepticism, and the evaluation skills. There are five professional skills in the SBL exam, and you have to master all five because all of the five, five professional skills would be tested in the exam. There is no exam wherein he has left one professional skill. He always have all the professional skills tested onto the questions in the exam. <clears throat> Moving on, guys, you know, coming on to the SPL syllabus areas. Now, this is something uh, I'm sure, you know, you know, you can just go through and have, you know, the same in detail uh, available on the ACCA website. You know, that, that's 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 really there. And of course, you can deep dive into it. But I what I really want to do over here is that I really want to take you through in terms of, you know, what these syllabus areas are all, you know, all of you know, are all, all about, because you should be at least having a uh, somewhat somewhere understanding of these areas, what you'll be dealing with when you're studying the sessions and going through that with me. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Now, coming on the first one, which is the leadership. Now, leadership is the first area where, wherein we will be talking on various things uh, as far as the syllabus area is concerned. Now, this is the first syllabus area, and we'll be talking on in terms of, you know, what a leader of an organization is, the quality of leader, the kind of ethics that they really need to demonstrate, the professionalism that they really need to demonstrate, how uh, a leader is being impacted by a culture of an organization, what is the culture of an organization, how one should be really be able to change the culture of an organization if they really have to, how a leader would deal with various peculiar situations like the fraud, bribery, corruption, and so on and so forth, just to ensure that the overall, overall uh, organization is duly taken care as far as all of these areas are concerned and they do not do not somewhat somewhere um, 
undermine the importance of of the leadership traits which which a, which a strategic business leader really need to demonstrate as they would step in into any kind of organization so we'll be talking on on, on all of these pointers my friend as we go forward as far as the leadership syllabus area is concerned moving on to the next syllabus area we will be talking on the governance now you being the strategic business leader of an organization you once you have known in terms of you know how to really demonstrate the leadership skills it is imperative that you should know that leaders of an organization really need to ensure that there is a strong governance in terms of anything and everything that happens in an organization so we will be talking on governance at large corporate governance in, in to be precise we will be talking on various structures that are there in the organization the responsibilities that are there whether it is directors whether it is committees of the directors what kind of committees are there what kind of directors are there what kind of responsibilities accountabilities that are being attached to them kind of reporting that they really need to do from the governance standpoint and so on and so forth so this is something that we'll be covering in the governance in the nutshell now if you really if you really circle back and of course take a step back and understand in terms of you know how the examiner is really uh, building the blocks for you as far as the strategic business leader is concerned he is effectively moving one step to the other step to the third step and you will see the third step in a while and he'll, he's trying to make you the leader of an organization that is the beauty of strategic business leader exam that the content really motivates you to learn the things that has need, that are needed to be the leader of any organization if you really go on to the third pillar of you know you know syllabus area it is the strategy wherein you need to learn in terms of you know what kind of strategy you really need to follow you really need to understand if you really have to prepare a strategy for an organization how would you be doing your internal analysis environmental analysis external analysis or the capability analysis that you currently have kind of capabilities you have and considering the capabilities that you have the internal environment that you have and the exposure to the external issues that you are really dealing with what kind of strategic choices you have and then how to really choose from those choices the right fit for yourself and how to then implement that so we will be dealing at large in terms of you know all of these issues as to what the strategy of an organization is all about and how you being the strategic business leader of an organization would be able to kill the right right things for yourself if you really go on to the fourth business area or the syllabus area you really want to excel on the risk now can you can you not not uh, uh, can you forget risk for, for for all practical reason when you are really leading an organization answer is absolutely no you have to know how do i identify the risk you have to know in terms of you know how should i assess them from the cost benefit standpoint how do i mitigate them and how do i manage them if i really have to manage them and live with them so we will be talking on in detail in terms of you know what the risk of an organization is all about and how you being the strategic business leader of an organization should be dealing with those risks in the best possible way and that's what we'll be covering in the risk syllabus area this is one of the most important area that is always always tested in the exam and he always gives you something from the strategy and risk always in the exam if you see the latest exam the march 2023 exam it had um two questions on strategy and one on risk so you will always find you know risk and strategy uh, always tested in the exam come what may directly or indirectly he would certainly have a question on that now coming on to the fifth pillar which is the technology and data analytics now you being the strategic business leader anil you being the strategic business leader rahul can you really excel in your life if you are not having a close tab on the technological changes that are happening in the industry absolutely not you have to know the kind of technological changes that are happening you really have to deal with them you really have to ensure that you are able to cope up with them and incorporate them in the best possible way you have to understand your it you have to understand the cyber risk you have to understand your system securities and control you have to understand the kind of disruptions that are happening whether it is the data analytics big data and so on so forth and how should you be dealing with that how should you be incorporating that what kind of cost benefit factors that would really needed to be considered and so on so forth so imperative that you're not forgetting technology come what may you do is that clear rangan yes sir 
Moving on, my friend, another one that we have is the organizational audit and control. Now, this is something we already have done in some shape or format. We already know internal control, audit, management reporting, compliance is somewhat part of governance. Sir. We all know that, sir. We have done that enough in our graduation and so on and so forth. Nothing new, my friend. The areas will be old, but of course, the way the examiner would be asking questions on these areas can be different. And that is what we'll be learning together when we'll be learning in, these, in the syllabus area. Coming on to the financial planning and decision making, that's another, another syllabus area wherein we'll be talking more on your financial analysis acumen that you really need to demonstrate. And of course, no, we'll be talking on you know various, various normal financial planning techniques, ratio analysis, forecasting, decision tree, expected value are some. We'll be having some more of these these when we'll be dealing the, the decision making making areas. It is more to equip you that how one should be assessing a decision from the financial standpoint. Coming on to the next one, which is the information and performance excellence. This is something I would say somewhat somewhere a balancing figure of various business, you know, syllabus areas that you have. You have to deal with the, the disruptions over here, the change management, project management, operational excellence that things really need to do from the, from the innovation and excellence standpoint. You really have to excel yourself, your organization to really deal with that. And that's what we'll be dealing and of course, understanding that in this overall syllabus area. Coming on to the professional skills. Now this, you know, while we've done the, the syllabus areas in terms of, you know, what all are there from your examination standpoint, there are five professional skills that I really want to talk on. Guys, just give me a thumbs up if you are really awake and you have not slept. Give me a thumbs up, guys. That will be really important for me. All righty. The, the person who gives me the first thumbs up gets a thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Coming on to the professional skills, guys, you know, we have five professional skills that really need to be demonstrated. We have communication professional skill, which really wants you to express yourself clearly and convincingly. So this, the, the expectation from this, uh, this professional skill is that whatsoever you're communicating is to the point and very clear and convincing. You should not be using the words or the sentences which are really making examiner feel that you're playing around with the words and not coming on to the point. Or you're not able to address the right thing that is being asked in the exam. Coming on to the commercial acumen, <clears throat> now this is something, you know, we already have it, right? We all, we all understand in terms of, you know, where to put our money on. We all understand that, you know, commercially, we all are sound for ourselves. But having an awareness of your wider business and external environment and then taking the right decision is what examiner really looks for. And that's what we'll be covering when we'll be doing the commercial equipment from our organization standpoint. Coming on to the next one, that is analysis. We will be spending time in terms of ensuring that the overall analysis that you do uh, of the case that is being given to you in the exam or of the areas that are there in the exam, you are ensuring that you have investigated and taking the holistic information. You're not missing on any and ensuring that you're making the right queries to the right people at the right point in time. So that's what analysis is all about. And as I said, we will be capturing a lot on this when we'll be practicing question together. Coming on to the professional skepticism, which is more like, you know, you being skeptical about anything that is being given to you. Not like overly skeptical, but of course, professionally skeptical to ensure that you're not taking things on the, on the face value, you're thinking, and of course, asking for the right questions and having the collaborative evidence wherever possible so that you are sure of what is happening and what you are supposed to deliver over there. Last but not the least is the evaluation, wherein you really need to demonstrate to the examiner that you have the ability of carefully assessing the information that is provided to you. You know the pluses and the minuses of the situation and you're able to take the right decision considering those pluses and minuses. And that's what evaluation skill is all about. While it is very theory over here, but when you'll see the questions coming your way, you will understand what I'm really talking through from these, these skill demonstration standpoint. We'll get to understand that soon. Is that clear, guys? <clears throat> all righty. So that's what, you know, on the whole, the, the, the syllabus area is all about. While we do have one last syllabus area that talks on the employability and digital skill, Actually, this is not a syllabus area. This is more like understanding the CBE framework of the exam. So if you have understood the computer-based exam, you're effectively 
uh, you're done with in terms of you know uh, what is needed in the syllabus area there is nothing in the syllabus area per se they really want you to excel on the cb skills because that's what you'll be dealing with when you'll be stepping on in any industry in any corporate as you may go forward we have given you uh, you know a specific training on the cbe as far as the SBL exam is concerned, that is there with you. You really have to go through that. <clears throat> and of course, when we'll be planning, we'll be planning the questions uh, together. We'll be answering the questions together. We will be dealing with that at that point in time. Now, coming on to the few questions, guys, that I raised, you know, in the in the start of the, the session, that the first question was that, is the lectures content and the uh, material that is being provided is enough for, from the strategic business leader standpoint do i really need to refer any books sir do i really need to you know practice anywhere sir do i really need to do any exam kit sir and so on and so forth answer is absolutely no you do not have to refer any exam kit any book else than what is being provided to you what is provided to you in the form of material what is provided to you in the form of sessions is really updated is the relevant one for you you should not be going anywhere doing anything more from the SPL exam standpoint nothing the only thing that i would add on is that if you really want to plan and do anything more then do the past exam questions of the acc SPL exam do not go through the exam kit do not go through any book that is not relevant what is being given to you is more than enough, more than sufficient. You should not be planning, planning anything above that. Only thing while they have covered most of the questions, either in the mock exam or in the, in the sessions. But if there is anything more that you really need to do is the leftover past exam questions. You should not be doing anything else than that. Now, what should be a study plan and approach to the preparation? I would say, you know, the first thing first is that you should start seeing the sessions, uh, you know, and, 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 and start practicing the class questions that I've already given and solved. The sessions are given to you syllabus area wise. So there is a flow that we have followed in terms of, you know, going through each and every session. You have to follow that flow. Do not jump on to session three first and then first, you know, later on. There is this, you know, the session from one to let's say 35, the way it is being given. You have to follow the same sequence because there will be various things that I'll be talking on in the later on sessions that would be relevant and all have already been covered in the, in the prior sessions. So follow the same sequence. You do not have to rush through. Read through the professional skills in entirety. We have specific sessions on the professional skills. Read through that. Understanding the format in the exam is very important, both from the reading standpoint as well as from the writing standpoint. So you have to understand the format. That is going to be the game changer. We have done enough on these formats and practice enough on these formats that should be able, that you should be able to excel on that in the best possible way. You have to acquire the reading and the writing skills. Practice is going to be the key over here. And I keep saying that like a broken record. And I'm sure you know you would see that in the sessions also. You have to practice questions by your own hand. You, there is no replacement to it. You have to practice questions by your own hand. Come what may, whatsoever I may give you. Till the time you have not practiced the questions, you would not understand where you're getting stuck. The more you'll practice it, the more you'll get to know, the more you'll talk, the more we'll resolve, and the better the marks are. There is a must watch that is being given to you. That is the video question marathon. There is, you know, a question marathon that has been provided to you that deals with the concept questions, comprehensive questions, exam standard questions and past exam questions. There's a lot that has happened over there. You have to go through that at least two times before you really sit for exams and then practice questions by your own hand for, for sure. I do want you to practice at least two mock exams with me. Now, those two mock exams can be two past exams also, or two, two mock exams can be any, any mock exam. I really recommend you to practice two mock exam and send it to me. We'll be more than happy. We will be coming back to you with the dates when, when the mock would be. You have to practice, ensure that you take out the time. Take out the time from your busy schedule and give me the mock. Answered it in the time to time situation so that I can tell you that you know where the things are going wrong. There is a comprehensive review that you get for your mock exam to ensure that you're able to club the gap and of course ensure that you're understanding the problems that you may get to see in the exam. And that is something that can be a game changer for you. Is that clear? Anil, give me a thumbs up, buddy. Anand, Asma. Needed a thumbs up. 
All righty. <clears throat> Moving on, guys. Once you have done all of that, what we have spoken, now is my time. Now, you know, you, I have spoken for 10 slides, you know, for you, right? One slide is for me. Now that you have done what you really needed to, you would get on to the situation wherein you would clear the exam. And now that you have cleared the exam, then you have to have to treat me with the coffee. And that's what would be my coffee time. Once you have cleared the exam, my friend, and this is the expectation that I have, you have to see the mug and mug has to be full of coffee. And that is what I would expect towards the end once you have cleared the exam. Now I am not getting any thumbs up. Is that a problem, guys? No, coffee is not a problem, right? Yes, absolutely. Now that's what I expect, guys, that you really have to. And guys, trust me, with all my experiences, with all of the results that we have been able to demonstrate, we have a strategy that we follow for the ASBIL exam that really works. And please follow that strategy. Rest is going to be in the hands of the God and they will be certainly there to really take you take you through the CF, C of SPL. The only thing that you need to do is follow the strategy in the right way, practice questions by your own hand, give the mock exam, take the review, understand that, club the gaps and treat me with the coffee. Is that clear, guys? Yes, sir. Now that effectively brings me to the end, guys. You know, uh, you have, uh, you know, all the details given over here. You have my WhatsApp number also here, you know, in case any, any issues anyone may have. I'll be happy to chat. I'll be happy to address that. Uh, I've given my email ID right away. You can note down that. Uh, you already have the details of Intram. And of course, the email ID of them also also available. Um, anything, guys, anyone may have. Now is the time to talk. Now is your time. I'll be more than happy to at least address any concerns that anyone may have and take it on from there. Asma, go ahead. Hello, hello everybody. I'm Asma Mohammed. I'm in Saudi Arabia. I work as a business development specialist and I'm trying to get a raise um, by doing this paper. Uh, sir, thank you so much. I mean, this was such an honor. You, your lectures are amazing. I had this one question where um, I'm very confused about my timeline. So I, I might, I'm going to be appearing in the paper in uh, June and I've got like literally two months I work a full-time job and I work overtime, but I do get my bosses give time for studying. So I'm just asking, like, do you think this is possible? Like, is it, do you feel this is going to happen? Absolutely, Asma. Two months? We're, standing, we're standing on 1st of April and we still have two months. Uh, most of the students, let me tell you, most of the students prepare for this exam in two months of time. Most of the students. Yes. But the only thing is that they really devote as much, as much time as possible uh, in these two months. So if I really have to give you a ballpark time that would be needed in terms of preparing for this exam in the two months time, if you really have to do well, you have to devote at least, at least four to five hours a day. Now that really needed to be early in the morning or late in the night, you know, mm -hmm. after before your office or after your office, but you have to devote that, my friend. You have to devote that. So four to five hours a day, you know, you can consider four hours a day, you know, as a bare minimum thing that you really need to devote on. Like, sorry, cut you off. Uh, this would be about one lecture a day. Is that what you're saying? Uh, one, about one to, to start with, yes. But okay. after the lectures then comes, you know, your practice. After the lectures comes the question marathon. After the lecture comes the mock exams. After the lecture comes the practice of the past exam questions and so on and so forth. So in the nutshell, four hours a day is something that is needed for the coming 60 days. And, uh, you know, we'll certainly be sitting on uh, in Dubai in a coffee house and having enjoying our coffee. I'm telling you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Anybody, guys, anything? I'm happy to chat. You know, this is completely for you. Uh, we should really be opening up and, of course, asking any doubt anyone may have. The, the idea is and I should get my coffee. Mayuri, Heyman, Heyman, my friend, come on. You, why? How can it be that, you know, I have, I'm seeing so many faces, right? From the skill and the, you know, and the other professional level subjects. Rangan, my friend, any questions you have? Rangan will say, I'll ask questions on WhatsApp, sir. I'm not here. <laughs> <I'm not> <laughs> Just started the, the session, so that's why there are not 
lot of question right now at this point of time no problem my friend i'm available on web, you know as i said on whatsapp any any concern any one may feel when you're going through the sessions i'm just a message away and you know the only intention is that you should be able to kill this exam in the best possible way and for that urvashi you are there only thing that you need to do is that follow the strategy urvashi do not miss on that mayuri anything that you have my friend isha all questions sir actually yes, please. regarding the mock test uh, any suggestions uh, before exam like how many days prior we should take so that it's useful um, you know mock exam mock yeah. exam don't worry on that you complete your syllabus mock exam i'll come back to you that this is the day on which we'll be having a mock exam okay good you know depending upon you know how the situation is going and how the things are going i i keep changing those dates but don't worry on that we'll take care of it mock exam is something we'll take care of it the only promise only promise mayuri i need to have from you is and this is something i have seen people missing on the only promise i need to have from you is that if and we'll be informing you one week in advance that this is the day of of mock exam the only promise i need to have is that on that day mayuri will not forget pankaj chingra he will give the exam yes for sure i can tell you i have seen enough examples wherein on the exam day something happens and the student doesn't give the exam so do not forget me on that day that day is important we'll be informing you in one week in advance that this is the day you are having an exam please do that it takes me hour and a half to check your exam and give you the reward but i'm ready to spend that to ensure that you get the maximum out of it you have to help me with that thank you so much sir isha anand guys i'm if i'm missing on any names do not think that i'm forgetting you i'm not it's just that i want you to speak up anil anything that you have my friend that can help you clear the exam speak up somebody hi can i go yes yes please hi um thank you for the session i think uh, you cleared out quite Uh, a lot of my questions already through this orientation um i just wanted to understand when you say that the exam kit is not relevant does that mean that you already cover all the questions that might be there in the exam kit in your uh, material or is that something that uh, is different or you you have probably something more advanced in your material so isha what is needed is very well covered the problem with the sbl exam is and you will get to know very soon you know once you'll go through the content and see the questions the question that really that comes in exam and the question that is there in the exam kit there is no comparison to it there is no and, and and it is only for the sbl exam for all other exams you know you would get to see a parallel question or a similar question that is there in the in the uh, in the exam kit but in the sbl exam questions is a question is very different from the from the exam kit question and i i can say that uh, with with all due respect to the publishers the standard of the exam kit is not there as compared to what is there in the acc exam standard of those questions are not there so i do not want you to practice something that would not take you there at times student feel that you know he has done the exam kit and i you know i'm i'm going to be making a blast that's not going to be happening you know if you'll do the exam kit that can happen if you are practicing the past exam acca sbl questions that are available on the website and that i have covered almost all of the questions in you know of course in, in some of some of them i'll cover in the mock exam some of them i will cover in the in the sessions you would get to know that that is where the stand and you would see yourself you know uh, just take one question from the exam kit and see one question from the past exam of acca sbl you'll get to see the difference and i do not want you to spend time for gaining nothing you know what i mean right i see i see no because there has been a lot of emphasis and talk on you know practicing through the exam kit all over so i keep hearing for all like subjects that's right yeah, for for all yeah. subjects i'm with you on that you know you know you i teach sbr also i never say rangan did i say ever did i ever say no don't do exam kit never but for this not needed okay. not needed all right good thank you 
Anybody else, guys? Anything? I still have nine more minutes. Go ahead, Asma. Hello, sorry, sorry to take up your time. Thank you, everybody, for bearing with me. I just wanted to ask you one more thing. So, like, are the questions topic wise? Like, I see the lectures are very topic oriented. Are the questions also like, for example, if I do one topic today, could I correlate it to a question, or is it a sessions, sequential? Sessions will have target questions, but question marathon is is making you equipped to handle multiple dimensional questions in the exam. So, say, for example, even you are doing leadership, you would find a question that is there with leadership. When you're Within doing the governance, when you're doing governance, there will be a question that will talk on governance in the session. You mean within the same lecture? Within the same lecture? The lectures, yes, in the lectures. I, all right. But after the lectures, in the marathon, you would find a question that will be touching various topics because that's how examiner would be doing. Examiner will give you a situation and in that situation, he may give you a scenario wherein you have to answer risk, you have to answer uh, finance, you have to answer technology and so on and so forth. So in the marathon, we'll be practicing multiple dimensional questions, uh, you know, as we go forward. But in the wow. sessions, it will be very standard. Wow. Rangan, to your point that, you know, whether all the professional skills to be used in every questions or part of the question, every part of the question would ask you one professional skill. So, for example, one A may ask you analysis skill. One B may ask you evaluation skill. 2A may ask you commercial acumen and 2B may ask you something, something else. So uh, one question would have one professional skill to be demonstrated there. And it, it will be mentioned? Or... Yes, yes, it will be mentioned. It will be mentioned. Generally, you know, they also, so they would say, and you will practice, when you will practice the questions with me, you know, you'll get to know. He'll say, while doing this, demonstrate a evaluation skill with reference to that's all he'll, he'll mention and he'll give you two marks three marks four marks for that so for demonstration he'll give you, you know four marks three marks two marks totaling to 20 marks on the whole another point sir uh, during the lecture what i observe that you are always using some example of your example or real life example something like that <laughs> And there is, uh, there might be a situation when we are analyzing a scenario given in the exam, we mention a point which was not indicated in the scenario. So whether that will be considered as an imaginary answer or imaginary scenario in the, by the examiner or something. No, like sir. That. The reason I talk so many practical examples is because I want you to think practically there. There would not be a straight answer in the exam, Rangan, as far as the SBL exam is concerned. SBR, you know, the thing with SBR is that come what may, IFRS 2 will be an IFRS 2 and everybody will do IFRS 2. But in the SBL exam, let's say there is a risk scenario. I'm just gi giving an example. Let's say, let's say there is a scenario wherein you're you're having a shopping mall. You're, own, you're, a, you're a firm that is owning a shopping mall and that shopping mall is struggling to have uh, control thefts. Because there is a lot of thefts that are happening in that shopping mall. I'm just making it out, my friend. Right? Let's take an example. Now, uh, let's say uh, Asma, you know, is is writing that you know, and you are being asked that you know, how should I control this? Asma is writing that you know, the one way to control is uh, that you should have security guards. And that's the right answer, right? Security guards control good. Now, Ma Mayuri may say, you know what? I think the ideal way to control the theft is that you should have the theft uh, barometers over there, you know, the, the protectors, so that if anybody goes out from the mall, there should be a you know, thing that happens over there. It's an automatic control, in technological implementation. That's the right answer. Rangan may say that, you know, in order to protect the theft, what I see is that you should have both guards as well as, you know, the, the barometers. Uh, let's say Isha, you know, Isha is, 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 is thinking more uh, from the strategic standpoint. And Isha says, you know what, I think, you know, you have to live with few of the thefts. You cannot control any because from the cost benefit analysis, you know, it is not really making sense. What I would recommend is that each store should prevent their own theft on themselves. So we should not take the ownership. Stores should take the ownership. That's a good answer. All right. So what I was saying was that, you know, there is no right answer to it. And since there is no right answer to it, uh, you have to show your practical knowledge over there, considering the scenario, 
and any and every practical answer is accepted in the exam. Rangan, does that help? You know what I'm trying to say? The reason I've given yes. so many practical examples in my session is to give you an, a thought process that this is how you should be thinking. This is what is happening in the industry. You know, all of these examples are the real ones, my friend. You know, I and it really comes from my experiences in terms of, you know, what, I, what mm -hmm. all I have seen in my, in, in, in my tenure right. or stints with different companies. Yes, Isha, go ahead. I'm sorry to come in again. Um, initially, you spoke about some changes that are upcoming post-June attempt. Could you throw some light on that as well? Isha, uh, okay, there are not, uh, so there is, there is no clear uh, communication as of now that I can really, you know, talk through on that. But there is a change that is coming up in the SBL exam, wherein from September onwards, SBL exam would be a three-hour exam. And the case study would be provided to the student in advance. Now, I have not uh, got the detailing of it from ACCA. You know, while I would be getting that, you know, as I go forward, you know, as we go forward. But as of now, this is the only thing I can share with you. Because as of now, this is the only thing I'm aware of. But give me some time, you know, once things will unfold and I will get the complete information around it. In terms of how would that be managed logistically, then I'll be in a better shape to really talk, talk on that. No, thank you. I mean, but um, Isha, we should not be worried. Right? In... We'll be clear. We'll be clearing this in June and go and and and. and... <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, it'll help us in making a better decision in terms of what attempt to kind of choose. So, yeah. so guys, yeah. let me tell you one thing. If you're thinking of clearing the SBL exam, clear it in June. Do not push it in September. Whenever any change happens, no, there are some teething issues that are always there in the exam always there in the exam so uh, you know i would say strategically again being a strategic business leader we should avoid it and do it right away and and take it forward so isha you need to be with me my friend for a few weeks to just ensure that we are able to clear this in these eight weeks of time It's raining like cats and dogs over here. Is that is that the same with you guys? Are you anybody from Delhi? No, no one from Delhi, right? No. Okay. Go go. <laughs> All right, but it, it's really raining, raining bad over here. Um, sir, can I ask something? Yes, please. Um, how many past year papers do you think we should, um, you know? Sorry, uh, you were saying something. Uh, how many past year papers do you think we should, uh, you know, study? Sare karenge Urushiyam. We'll do it Sare. all. We'll do it all. <laughs> we, have, no, just... we have to go and fortify the exam, Urushi. And that is only possible if we'll do it all. And we'll do it all. Don't worry. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, hi, sir. This is Anil. Hi, hi Anil. Hi. Finally, Anil has spoken. No, I've... I've Ask 10 times, Anil, please speak, please speak. Oh, I have some issues there. Actually, I'm out go ahead, of... Go ahead. go ahead, my friend. Uh, so I'm very new to this team and uh, very new to this SEC as well because I'm a qualified CMA and uh, currently I'm uh, working in, in a MNC for the private equity sector. So I am not the someone those who have cleared uh, all this level and come. I just got exemption of nine paper and I'm here in the uh, professional level. So actually, I need some... Uh, one to one talk with you if it is it could be possible from your side anytime you as because I have I'm having some issues regarding this SEC and other some some past things. Right? We can talk, Anil. You know, I've given my WhatsApp number. Let's chat. Yeah, and... even I have taken this intro. Let's already. chat on that. Let's chat on that. Happy to happy. Okay, to... Uh, your available time, be please, or I will think. Let's chat time. on that, Anil. We'll 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 okay. chat and then we'll talk on this. Sure, sure, sure. Thanks, thanks, Tim. Anybody else, guys? Anant, you're not liking me, Anant. Oh, Anant is liking me, but Anant is in office. All right. Anybody else, guys? Anyone may have Rohan, Harleen, Venkatesh. Venkatesh, you you didn't switch on your camera, Venkatesh. I'm very angry with you. Let me tell you this. But next time, this should. 
This should not happen, Venkatesh. I'm, I'm skipping off this time. All right. Anybody else, guys? Anything? Asma, anything? Before we really wrap up, my friend. Ma Mayuri, Hemant. Hemant? Is there a WhatsApp group? Is there a WhatsApp group like where we can all connect or maybe yes. have some comments? Yes, um, there is a WhatsApp okay. group that will be coming up your way in another, like, say, week's time. Everybody would be on the one one WhatsApp group. Hemant. My friend, I've not forgotten you. Good evening, sir. After FRSBR, I'm seeing him, yes. you know, in SBL. All good, Eamon? Yes, sir. Everything is fine. All clear? Sir, How many marks, Eamon? We have to target 80 plus, right? Eamon, <laughs> you know what? Eamon topped in financial reporting, guys. Just to let you guys know. So, you know, he, you know, you have to, you have to do something, Eamon, to, to say my name. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. I'll try my best. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. I think there is nothing left. So thank you very much for joining in. I know uh, it, it it was a bit uh, noisy today because of you know uh, this rain and everything going. So sorry for that. And um, we we'll look forward to connecting again. And there will be many more meetings that will come your way. And keep up the rigor, guys, uh, because I'm not going to be skipping my coffee. Asma, I have to be... You're said in Riyadh, right? You're in Riyadh. Okay. So I've never been to Riyadh. So, you know, uh, you should come, sir. It's amazing. You should definitely okay, come. So I'll be coming for my coffee for sure, Asma. You, you, just, <laughs> have to, you just have to create that opportunity. You know, there are, I can tell you, there are many countries wherein my coffee is due now. I have already accrued on my, on my, on my balance sheet. So I have That's to awesome. have one from Riyadh now. It's so nice to study with the, my Indian brothers and sisters. I mean, I'm from Pakistan. It's so lovely. Uh, mashallah. I mean, I, I think this is what we should advertise in the media that this is a teacher that I respect. Like I keep it on top of my head, my respect and my sisters and brothers. This is what they should be showing the media, you know, instead of guns. And, yeah. <laughs> likewise, likewise, my friend, likewise. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, guys. Let's connect again and take this on. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.